Good morning, you are watching News I-24-7. Today's headlines are Sai Daily Jailoni passes away in Srinagar, President, PM Kondol death of the Kashmiri freedom fighter. Veteran Kashmiri leader Sai Daily Shagilongi passed away Wednesday night at his home in Srinagar, capital of Indian occupied Kashmir at the age of Sai Daily Gilongi was born on September 29, 1929, to Sai Pir Shagilongi of Zori Mun's village in Tehsil Bandagra, which then formed a part of Baramulla district. Gilongi received his preliminary education at Sopor and finished his studies at the Oriental College. Lahore, Koma, Pakistan. Gilani spent his boyhood in the headquarters of Plebiscite Front at Mujahid Manzil. Prime Minister Imran Khan in a statement said, he was deeply saddened to learn of the passing of Kashmiri freedom fighter, Said Ali Jailani, who struggled all his life for his people and their right to self-determination. He suffered incarceration and torture by the occupying Indian state but remained resolute. We in Pakistan salute his courageous struggle and remember his words. Hum Pakistani hai no Pakistan humara hai. The PM said the Pakistan flag will fly at half mast and the country will observe a day of official mourning. President Dr. Arif Alvi also expressed his deep grief and sorrow over the sad demise of the veteran leader, Said Ali Shah Jailani. In a condolence statement, he said Kashmir was deprived of a great leader who remained steadfast against the Indian imperialism all his life. Ali Jailani was a brave, courageous and sincere leader, he said and prayed on an almighty to rest, the departed soul in eternal peace, and grant courage to the bereaved family to bear, the loss with fortitude. Now she asks international community to continue supporting Afghanistan. Minister for Foreign Affairs Shamaynu Murshi Wednesday said the international community should continue its support to Afghanistan and should not abandon the country in the present situation. Addressing a press conference along with Foreign Minister of Netherlands Sigrid Kakhir, he said he discussed with the Dutch minister the bilateral relations and the present situation in Afghanistan. He said a Dutch foreign minister was visiting Pakistan after a gap of 15 years. He said Netherlands was the second largest trading partner of Pakistan in the European Union. Qureshi said he apprised the foreign dignitary about Pakistan's viewpoint on the situation in Afghanistan. I told her about the harm that could be done by abandoning Afghanistan. The Dutch FM thanked Pakistan for helping in evacuation of her country's citizens from Afghanistan. Qureshi informed the minister about the discussion that took place during his visit of the four countries of Central Asia. The Dutch minister appreciated Pakistan for hosting the Afghan refugees for decades. On Friday, a meeting of the foreign ministers of the European Union countries would be held to discuss the situation in Afghanistan and to formulate the next strategy. Earlier, Foreign Minister Shamomud Murshi had wide-ranging talks with the visiting foreign minister of the Netherlands. The talks covered the latest developments in Afghanistan and bilateral relations. Underlining the significance of the visit, Foreign Minister Qureshi noted with satisfaction the strong momentum in Pakistan-Netherlands relations, recalling their telephonic conversation of 21 August and the telephone call between Prime Ministers Imran Khan and Mark Rutt. Foreign Minister Qureshi shared Pakistan's perspective on the evolving situation in Afghanistan. President Dr. Arif Alvi Wednesday said that peace in Afghanistan would prove to be a bonanza for Pakistani businessmen and the Central Asian region would open up for trade and investment. Speaking at the 4th Business Excellence Awards Ceremony of Islamabad Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Koma Ichi, he said that Pakistan would immensely benefit from peace and stability in Afghanistan. Wader port would be shortest route for the Central Asian states, and trade of these countries would flourish, he added. The regional stability would catapult Pakistan into a new era of progress as business opportunities would remarkably increase, he observed. He said Pakistan endured terrorism and the burden of Afghan refugees during the four decades war of Afghanistan. Pakistani leadership especially Prime Minister Imran Khan continued stressing on the world that the Afghan issue could only be settled through political means and use of force, and war was not the way to resolve the conflict. 
In the conflict, dollar two trillion was spent and tens of thousands of lives were lost. But the issue could not be resolved, he remarked. They appreciated Pakistani military and security agencies for pursuing a sensible policy on Afghanistan. The president said that Pakistan was making progress in all fields, which could be noted from the headway made by the business community of Islamabad. Referring to the mistakes made by the previous governments, he said the loot and corruption in the past dented the reputation of the country, and the corrupt practices shook confidence of Guzinusman. Dr. Alvi appreciated the government for the way it handled the coronavirus pandemic and protected the poor from hunger and unemployment. In India, the government behaved crassly and its economy was devastated by the ravages of coronavirus, he continued. FM Rashi, Canadian counterpart discuss changing Afghan situation Foreign Minister Makhdoom Shah Mahmood Rashi on Wednesday, received a video call from his Canadian counterpart Mark Garnu. The two foreign ministers besides reviewing the rapidly changing situation in Afghanistan, also discussed possibilities of providing humanitarian support to Afghanistan. Foreign Minister Qureshi stressed the need to achieve inclusive political settlement. He urged the international community to stay engaged with Afghanistan to put it on the path of progress and prosperity after four decades of conflict, a press release issued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here said. The Canadian Foreign Minister expressed gratitude to Pakistan for supporting the evacuation process and providing logistical support in running rescue missions for Canadian citizens successfully. He especially lauded the role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Pakistan, in particular, its crisis management unit, in ensuring seamless repatriation of Canadian officials and nationals from Afghanistan. He informed that Canada had provided 50 million Canadian dollars of humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. Foreign Minister Qureshi reiterated that Pakistan would continue to provide all possible support in evacuation of stranded Canadian citizens as well as for providing humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. In the bilateral context, the Foreign Minister of Pakistan called upon the Canadian government to ease the visa regime for Pakistani nationals, in particular students. He also asked for positive revision of travel advisory for Pakistan like the UK as well as United Nations and other partners. This was the third call by the Canadian Foreign Minister in the quick succession, reflective of close coordination and understanding between Pakistan and Canada. China hopes all parties in Afghanistan to echo wish of Afghan people. China on Wednesday hoped that all parties in Afghanistan will echo the wish of the Afghan people and shared aspiration of the international community and build an open and inclusive political structure. China sincerely hopes that all parties in Afghanistan will echo the wish of the Afghan people and shared aspiration of the international community and build an open and inclusive political structure. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin made the remarks in response to a question about reports that the Taliban will announce a new government on Friday. He said the relevant parties will adopt moderate and prudent domestic and foreign policies, make a clean break with all terrorist groups, and live in good terms with other countries, especially its neighbors. Wang Wenbin said, Afghanistan is turning a new page in its history, facing both opportunities and hopes as well as challenges and difficulties. The Afghan people, having suffered so much, are now standing at a new starting point for national peace and reconstruction, he added. He said the international community is closely following developments, including the formation of a new government in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a heroic country and has never surrendered, Wang said quoting Chairman Mao Zedong. China and Afghanistan are friendly countries. China does not want to harm Afghanistan, and Afghanistan does not want to harm China, Wang said adding, the two countries always support each other. China will as always pursue a friendly policy toward the entire Afghan people, respect Afghanistan's sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity and will not interfere in the country's internal affairs. Over 8.46 million bales of cotton production expected this year. 
FAPO, the Cotton Crop Assessment Committee, CONOCAC, on Wednesday told over 8.46 million bales of cotton production was expected during current season. The committee met here with Said Fakha Imam, Federal Minister for National Food Security and Research in the chair. Representatives of cotton growers, provincial agriculture departments, associations and senior officials of the NFS Ampersand R also attended the meeting. The minister welcomed the participants and thanked for their participation, and invited them all to share their feedback and recommendations for the development of cotton crop in the country. Fake Hariman was told that the province of Sindh expected production of 3.5 million bales in this season. He was briefed that the climate in this season had been much better than the last season, and due to less rainfall overall production was expected to increase. The production of cotton in Punjab is expected to touch 4.5 million bales, at an increase of approximately 8.5% from last year. Overall cotton production is expected to reach 8.46 million bales. The minister was briefed that the year 2020 saw 398.6 mm rainfall which had a devastating impact on the production whereas this year the rainfall was 78.6 mm, which has improved the prospect of overall production. Furthermore, he was told that the attack of Mia Libuk and White Eflie and Kulkov remained significant which had adversely affected the production of cotton. Fakha Imam said that it was imperative that awareness amongst farmers was raised regarding contamination control. He said that through proper chemical sprays, the quality and quantity of cotton production could be enhanced. The minister said that the government would be proactive with the provision of quality seed to facilitate the farmers. National Tax Council needs to harmonize taxes. The first meeting of the National Tax Council Common was held on Wednesday to harmonize taxes and reduce cost of doing business in the country. Federal Minister for Finance and Revenue Shaw Katarin presided over the NTC meeting, according to press statement issued by the Finance Ministry. Speaking on the occasion, the Finance Minister stressed upon the need for greater cooperation between the federal and the provincial governments in matters relating to harmonization of general sales tax commerce. He expressed the hope that under the NTC umbrella, both the federal and provincial governments would move towards the harmonizing taxes across the multiple jurisdictions, so as to facilitate the businesses and reduce the cost of doing business in Pakistan. Tarin urged the participants to work together on the pending taxation matters, so that an arrangement relating to harmonization of GST amongst provinces or government could be finalized at the earliest. On the occasion, the Finance Secretary highlighted the tours of NTC and the progress achieved so far as the Federal Board of Revenue and the respective provincial finance departments gave a productive and positive input on various taxation issues which came under discussion. The provincial finance ministers welcomed the initiative of the federal government and assured to move ahead under the umbrella of NTC for the betterment of the country and to build a progressive economy. Among others, the meeting was attended by Finance Minister Punjab, Meghdoom Hashim Jawan Bacht, Finance Minister Kaiba Chtungla, Tamer Khan Jagra, Finance Minister Balochistan, Secretary Finance, Chairman, Sindh Board of Revenue, Secretary Finance Division, Chairman FBR and other senior officers. Pakistan named 20, hyphen player ODI squad, for New Zealand series. National cricket selectors on Wednesday named a 20, hyphen player squad for the three ICC Cricket World Cup Super League. One day internationals against New Zealand, which would be played in Royal Pindi on 17, 19 and 21 September. Uncapped wicketkeeper Mohamed Harris, fast bowlers Mohamed Wazim and Shanaways Dahoni, and wrist spinners Ahad Mahmood have been named in the squad, while middle order batters Iftaik Ha'omd and Kushtal Shah have been recalled. If Tyker's seventh and last ODI was against Zimbabwe in Royal Pindi, while Kushtal's only ODI appearance was also in the tight match against Zimbabwe in Royal Pindi. Players who were part of the ODI series against England in July, but have failed to retain their places, are Harris Sahail, 
Solmanani Aya, Safros Omd and Sahib Maksud. Pakistan ODI Squad, Baber Azam, Captain, Central Punjab. Abdullah Shafiq, Central Punjab. Fahim Ashraf, Central Punjab. Fake Hosayman, Kaibab Chtungwa. Harris Raf, Northern. Hazen Ali, Central Punjab. Iftaik Haram, Kaibab Chtungwa. Imam Al Haqqa, Mabalakistan. Kushtal Shah, Southern Punjab. Muhammad Harris, Kaibab Chtungwa. Muhammad Hasman, Sindh. Muhammad Nawaz, Northern. Muhammad Rizwan, Kaibab Chtungwa. Muhammad Razim Jan, Kaibab Chtungwa. Sword Shakil, Sindh. Shadab Khan, Northern. Shaheen, Shayafridi, Kaibab Chtungwa. Shanawais Dahani, Sindh. Usman Kadi, Central Punjab. And Zahid Mahmud, Southern Punjab. Chief Selector Muhammad Razim said, the series against New Zealand is extremely important for Pakistan as the matches are part of the ICC Cricket World Cup 2000. And 20th, requalification. While we have tried to put together a formidable and a balanced unit, we have continued to ensure that we give opportunities to high-performing players while looking into the future so that we can develop a strong bench strength. Thanks for watching News I 24-7. For more news visit our website on www.newsi247.tv or follow us on Twitter, YouTube and Facebook.